Hello, I'm sitting here in one of my nice recliners we have here in the house. It's a nice piece of brown uh, imitation leather, and it's, it's new to us, but it's not new. It was given to us by somebody who got some new furniture. And so we said, sure, we have a lot of seats that like to sit in chairs. So we decided we'll take them, and here they are. These recliners are, are great recliners. See how wonderful they work? I'm reclining way back and my feet are up in the air. Wait a minute. It didn't recline back at all, did it? The chair is just exactly the way it was when I began talking to you. But it's a recliner. It's supposed to recline. That's why it was made. It's made to be sat on, but it's also made to recline. But it's not doing that. I don't understand. I, I want to read to you a couple of different pieces of Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise. You discern my thoughts from afar. And he goes on talking about how God knows everything about him. And then in verse 13, he says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows this very well. So he's talking about how aware he is that God knows him fully because he's aware that God made him. And he likes that idea. And he says, My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In the book were written every one of them before the days I'm sorry, in your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me when I had not yet lived one of them. And he goes on, and he goes on. Behind me you hear a dog who's not really pleased with me talking or something, I don't know. But this recliner is not doing what it's supposed to do. And that's because it's up against a wall, actually a half wall. This recliner can recline, but it's restricted. It's not living up to its full potential, if you will, because there have been limitations placed upon it that it caused it to simply be a chair for sitting, unlike its twin over here. You see, we have two of these. Now this one here, I can just kind of kick back. And now my feet are up in the air, and here I am. Just relaxing in a recliner that has reclined because that is what recliners are for. What about you? For what purpose has God formed you? For what purpose has God made you? Is it simply to exist? Is it simply to take up space? To sit against a wall and to do the bare minimum? Or does God have a plan and a purpose for you that is maybe something you're not fully aware of yet? As we search the scriptures, as we go through daily in our lives, spending time in God's word, spending time in prayer, it, it becomes easier for us to see what God has in mind for us to do. And, and these COVID situations have challenged all of us to search ourselves individually and collectively as communities, as counties, as states, as a nation, as the continents around the world, all of us are reassessing, and as church, as families, what's our purpose? 
It seemed before it was just to gather week after week after week and do church. But we can't do much of that. Although we're going to open up, it looks like, on the first Sunday of June, a week and a half or so from now. We're excited about that. We're going to have to make some adjustments to things, but we're getting there. But it's not just about gathering in a building. We have a purpose. Yes, to praise and worship God is part of that. But also to live as God's children, doing what it is God calls us to do. Living our lives, reflecting his grace, reflecting his glory, being his witnesses, being his servants, being his disciples, doing what it is he calls us to do using the gifts he has given us as he has fashioned us in certain ways. Each of us has different strengths, abilities, and gifts, and on and on and on. Right, so if you can go away now to do what God calls us to do. And if you're a dog, just to kind of walk around and wag your tail like you might have seen that moment ago. But it's not always easy to do that. But we've been challenged to have to find new ways to minister. To use the internet, like we're doing right here. To worship in the parking lot, like we've been doing on Sundays. To do things differently. Because it's what we can do. And we can't do the regular things. That is a dog you're hearing in the background, in case you're wondering. He's not sure what his purpose is beyond eating and what have you. But the church has been pulled kicking and screaming into the next century, I think, through all of this COVID stuff, forcing us to acknowledge the fact that we are in a digital age and that, yes, as church, we are called upon to use the gifts that are in the world around us, the tools around us, not to let the world fashion us, but to use what the world has to deliver God's message as church, as people. To live our lives as servants, serving others within the church and beyond the church, the community. And so, what is your purpose? For what does God have you breathing? Are you just a, a space holder for somebody else? Till the next one of you comes along? That's not a reincarnation statement. Don't take that at all. Or are you living, doing something with your life? We're going to be challenged more and more to continue to adjust to new ways as the world moves forward past COVID, although we're not done with COVID by any means. So now we move in to the end of May, to Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit, come. we're talking about the Holy Spirit this coming Sunday on Pentecost Sunday and what that does for his church as he brought the power to the lives of those people and thousands were transformed in a single day. That same Holy Spirit is at work in you who believe. He has fashioned you. He has made you. He has a purpose for you. Don't limit that purpose because you're not sure. Surrender to him. And let him fill you and animate you as you rejoice as his beloved children, leaning into whatever he has in mind. Pray with me if you would. Gracious Lord, we rejoice that you have made us and that you remind us that we are yours. We are yours by creation. We are yours by recreation. For this we praise you. Heavenly Father, remind us daily that we have also a purpose, not just a place. And let us embrace the challenge that is before us letting your power make that difference. 
Lord, we continue to ask your blessings for the churches around the world that are looking for ways to minister. And as many churches are opening this Sunday, many more next Sunday, in these new ways, Lord, bless the leadership and those in the pews, bless all involved, that they would do so wisely, graciously, carefully, considering one another, that even as we gather, we would be blessed to be a blessing so that others will be blessed by not our stubborn attitudes, but by the grace in our hearts. We pray this for the sake of Jesus. Amen.